Okay, recently I've been working with stepper motors, and in a previous video I showed a stepper motor that ran off of a Bedini circuit. And in this video I want to show you another circuit that I came across, a uh, lid motor did it. Um, you can see over here his circuit diagram has two transistors, a, N, or a PNP and then an NPN. But uh, he just kept this 2N4401 in his diagram, and then I've been experimenting a little bit more with different uh, transistors here. I've, I've kept this one the same, but experimenting with different transistors here has produced different results, and I wanted to show some of those results today. Okay, so here's the traditional setup. Let's pull this jumper out real quick, and you can see it automatically kicks on. Uh, those are the standard diodes. A little LED light showing that it's operating. You can barely kind of see it there. The motor is running, although it's not very strong. It does run pretty decently. And you can see over here the voltages that I'm using as it starts. It runs really well from about 4 volts at 1 amp. And it'll pick up speed as I go all the way up about six volts and then it'll shut off and then it turns off and I gotta turn it back down because I've blown up several of these little transistors just because I've overpowered them but uh, it's a pretty impressive little circuit barely uses any amperage um, but what I'm going to show you next is what you can do by changing this transistor and leaving everything else the same alright so this is the same setup I've switched the transistor so what was used to be the 2N4401, I've now substituted for a similar transistor. If you zoom in real close, you can see it's the 222A. And uh, here's some of the voltage readings that I've read. It, it operates a little bit lower voltage, same amperage, but it doesn't max out as high in the voltage. It only goes up to about 6 volts and the same amperage. So basically it's doing the exact same thing as the previous one. And you'll see here, okay, the light LEDs glowing, and this is actually an indicator of the uh, flyback, and I'll show you that a little bit later. That's the collapsing field coils in here, running at about the same speed, same amount of torque, it barely takes any effort to stop this. So it's not impressive in that, other than the efficiency. And you can see as I crank up the voltage, it quits right at about 6 volts. So I'm going to try to go a little slower. Yep, stops right there at 6. So anyway, we'll go on to the next transistor and I'll show you this uh, effects on that one. Alright, so for this next transistor, it's the 2N 3904. Um, it actually requires a little more voltage. The lowest reading I got on it was 6 volts. Um, it's a little more efficient on the amperage because I can go all the way up to four, 12 volts at 0.14 amps. So I'll demonstrate that. So this, this transistor is actually uh, what you would say the twin of this one. So this is a PNP and then this one, all they did was switch the values to where it's a NPN or a negative positive negative. So these two are actually paired really well together. And you'll see as soon as I turn it on, it'll start out at 7 volts. And it runs at a pretty good speed. You'll see how low I can turn it down. About 6.5 and, and it turns off. So go back up. So at 7 volts it's running at 0.1 amps. And I can actually turn this one all the way up to 12 volts. And it gets much faster RPMs. 
and it keeps this about 0.4 amperage. If I go any higher, then it shuts off. So, so when you're dealing with these smaller transistors, you have to be real careful because it doesn't take a whole lot of voltage before they start to get hot. So that's why we have this one here. I've actually learned that you can power much higher powered transistors with just this little bitty uh, PNP transistor as the trigger. And I'll demonstrate that next. Okay, go ahead. Um, Alright, so in this transistor I actually pulled out of a television. You can see here the the number that's on it is a C5129, and then looking it up, I can see that uh, from the, the center to the base is 1500 volts, and from the center to the emitter, it's about 600 volts. So this is a really high voltage transistor. Uh, the base is only needs about 5 volts to trigger so for this experiment it's really nice and it also has really good amperage too so in theory you can run a pretty good sized motor with this and so that's what I got here in this setup I had to add some leads to it to get it to fit in my breadboard but other than that everything's the same um, I did skip this one resistor that was in the circuit previously. I just used a jumper because I couldn't get enough voltage to trigger the base on this one. So what I did over here on the circuit was where it called for a 1K, I just used a jumper and just go straight straight line into the base here. So you don't even need this transistor. And that's all I changed on this circuit. So this is what this little guy here is. It's just a trigger. Okay. Uh, the nice thing about this is you're only using two of the wires on your uh, stepper motor, so you don't need you only need two, and the other two you can actually pull off a little bit of electricity and power things like LEDs or you know slight small loads. Um, but the really neat thing is that you get really high torque and high power out of this. So turn on the power. crank it up. And that's about the same speed as what the other transistors were doing. At 9 volts, it's using a little bit more amperage, but the nice thing is I can turn it up to 12 volts easily, and it has a lot of torque. I don't know if you can see that. anyway, this is a lot more practical for actually using it as a motor. So you could use this on a bicycle. If it was a larger motor, it would be really efficient. Um, a little motor like this would be good for a little scooter or a skateboard or anything else that you might have. And then the nice thing about it is this flyback. So you could actually be running this off of a battery and charging another battery with it, just like you would with the Bedini. And I'll show you some of the... the oscilloscope details with that here in a second okay so you can see that we're still set up at 12 volts and turn it down just a little bit so it's right there at 12 and almost 2 amps so we're using about 24 watts of power but you can see I've got one little diode where the, the LED used to be coming out of the uh, center or the, the C on the, on the circuit. And this is my power lead going in here to the red on the oscilloscope. And you can see the huge spikes. These are back EMF spikes coming off this motor. And if I turn down the, the RPM, you can see they spread out. And you can barely see the tops there. It's saying those are about 80 volt spikes. And if you go back over here to my power intake, 
You can see I'm only using about seven and a half volts. So let's put it right at eight volts or 8.1. Go back to the oscilloscope. And you can see these huge spikes still coming off of here. I can't get it to be steady. Yeah, at the very tops of them, it's saying 170, 180 volt spikes. Those are just huge jumps. Let's pause it real quick. Much higher. I have this set up a little bit high here. So it does drop down a little bit below the baseline for a second, and then it hits a big spike again. Comes down and touches, spikes again. Those are really interesting. I'm, I'm imagining this has a really high charging capability. Plus, it still has a lot of power and torque. I'll turn it back up to 10. Before it turns off. So I imagine this would be really good and still practical because it's such a high precision build. If I used, if I tried to do this with a regular Bedini motor, that I built at home, it just wouldn't have the torque or the power that these little stepper motors would have. And so that's why I see a lot of potential in this thing. And I'll be doing a lot more experiments with different transistors and see what what uh, would be the best combination. Right now I've got a really good combination just going just by changing the NPN. So go ahead and replicate this. I know Lid Motor did some work on it. Uh, Smart Creations, I think, is the ones who really originally came out with this uh, circuit. But like uh, Lid Motor said, they're all kind of similar in design. And so it's a really easy build. Very practical. So go ahead and try it at home. See what else you guys can come up with. Um, but as for me, I'm just going to keep on experimenting and trying different things. Okay. One more thing I wanted to show before I leave. Uh, what I did here was I actually used all or both windings, so all four of these outputs. I just put a little jumper in the middle here so the input came out and then went back in and then came out. And what this does is it lowers my RPMs a little bit, but it gives me double the torque because I'm using all the field windings now. And so this is like really strong. I don't think I would be able to stop it before it tries to switch and go the other direction at all. So this is probably the most powerful setup that you can get just by jumping these in, in series and getting the, the full effect of the coils inside this. Something I just thought I'd share with you and show you.